Good day, Math 30-1s. We continue our conversation about five-point sketches, this time as transformations. So eventually we don't have to think about um, is it a vertical stretch and horizontal stretch, and we talk a little bit more about the parameters that make up a sine of b x minus c in a factored form plus d, or as a cosine graph, a cos of b x minus c plus d. And it could feel almost overwhelming to look at one, two, three, again, four letters, vertical stretch, vertical shift, horizontal stretch, horizontal shift. Under new names so far, amplitude, period, and something new coming right away. So as a reminder, we're graphing sine of x as a five point sketch, and this needs to be quick. First point, last point at 360, halfway point at 180, right in the middle, quarter way at the max, three quarter way at the minimum, and a smooth curve connecting to give us our sinusoidal function. Our first thing we're gonna talk about is a vertical displacement. So there's a very big difference between sine of x plus one and y equals sine of x plus one. <laughs> We are not talking Restart about to the office, sine please. of Restart. x plus 1. We're talking about sine of x d value plus 1, not a c value. So how do we deal with this? We're going to start by talking a little bit about the middle of our graph. The middle of our graph was the x-axis, but now what's happening is the middle of our graph is going up 1, and this becomes a good reference point. This is the middle of our graph. Our amplitude is one, unchanged. So I'm gonna say, travel up one, there's your ceiling. Travel down one, there's your floor. The more structure you can give to your graph or grid, the more comfortable this is gonna feel. There's nothing else changed other than a vertical shift. So what we get to do is start our sinusoidal graph on the middle. This would have been the x-axis on the middle and again, we're gonna be traveling up, but our five points. First, last at 360, halfway at 180, quarter way at the max, three quarter way at the minimum, and a smooth curve connecting. And what you'll notice is that the whole graph has shifted up one, and we really didn't have to put a lot of mental thought into it, if we have our overall structure. We start to ask questions like, what's the max? What's the min? What's the period? Um, and maybe what's the middle? And occasionally being given only the graph. Could you look at that equation and say what the max will be? Eventually we'll talk a little bit more about formulas. Let's try a cosine graph with a shift down one. Again, we'll talk about the overall structure as shifting down one. There's your middle. Amplitude is still one, there's your ceiling, there's your floor, and let's draw our cosine graph. Remember that a cosine graph doesn't start on the middle going up, it starts at the max, ends at the max, halfway point is at the minimum, three quarter way point, uh, quarter way point is on the middle, three quarter way point on the middle, and it looks like a V. It should look like a very sharp V. You can avoid making these consummate Vs and make a smooth curve connecting. There's your cosine graph shifting one down. Again, questions could be what's the max? What's the min? What's your period? Where's your middle? Occasionally when we talk about a horizontal shift, we use the word phase shift under the conversation of, um, of sinusoidal functions. So this is 60 degrees to the right. Remember that we have to think a little bit backwards for inputs. So what we get to do for a sine graph is again consider midline hasn't changed, max, min, still the same, but we're simply starting 60 degrees to the right, on the middle, traveling up. Normally we would end at 360, but that's gonna shift one to the right. Normally our halfway point is 180. We should be one big tick mark, 60 to the right. Now at this point, once I have my, my first and last, we could really just 
talk about a visual what's in the middle. There's your halfway point. What's in the middle? Up to your max. Three quarter way point, what's in the middle? You're on your minimum. And you can stop looking at your scale almost and think of this almost as a visual exercise in finding middles. Now occasionally you could be asked to return this back to the y-axis and I know that it's one big tick mark and two small tick marks to get from middle to top so I'm gonna go one big tick mark and two small to get back to the minimum and here is the rest of your way back to your minimum. For a cosine graph shifting 60 degrees to the left we could say here's your starting point. Remember that a cosine graph starts on the max, ends on the max, 60 right of 360. Halfway in between these, you're on your minimum. Halfway in between those, you're on your middle. Halfway between those, you're on your middle. And a smooth curve connecting those dots cross below the floor. Uh, but this is again making a cosine graph starting at the max, shifting 60 degrees to the left. Evan Yakimission to the office, please. Evan Yakimission. As we start to combine transformations, we start to see maybe phase shifts and vertical shifts happening at the same time. So, first, note the vertical shift. We want to get this overall structure. If this is shifting up to, let's say, there's your middle. No amplitude change for this one, so we get to say this is simply ceiling up one, floor down one, phase shift of 30 degrees to the right, sine graph starting on the midline, I did that incorrectly, 30 degrees to the right is two small tick marks, apologies, and normally we would end at 360. There's no period change, but normally we'd end at 360, but it's two tick marks to the right. Normally we cross over at 180, but two tick marks to the right. Normally our halfway point, um, or you could simply look at what's in the middle of these, but it occurs at 120. Normally it's 90, but two tick marks to the right, and you're at your max. 300 degrees at your minimum. You could even count tick marks. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's your smooth curve. And this is now a sinusoidal function up to 30 degrees to the right. And again, you can start asking questions. How do you get your max? How do you get your min? Looking only at this. And some of you will start to put it together that if you start with your middle, travel up your amplitude, start at your middle, travel down your amplitude, you are getting these maxes and min values. So eventually we start talking about formulas like your D value plus your A value or your D value minus your A value because the D will always be your middle. We'll eventually talk about this new name for the middle as a midline or a median. We'll do one more with a little bit more happening and this one has an amplitude of two we have a D value or a middle at y equals 1. We have a B value of 2, so our period is going to be a 360 divided by 2 or 180 degrees. We have a horizontal shift or a phase shift, 60 degrees left. And all of a sudden, if we can do this one, it's, it's a pretty big task. So let's come up with our overall structure, shifting up one, there's your midline, up two for the amplitude, down two for your amplitude, and here is our structure. There's your ceiling, there's your floor, we're starting 60 degrees to the left, there's your starting point for a sine graph. If this was cos, we would be putting that dot right up here. As a sine graph, we're finishing this in, in 180 degrees, so we can maybe consider this as 60, 120, 180, or you could have said 
here's your 0 to 180, but it's again a big tick mark to the left. So as long as we've got our 180, great. Now you can almost ignore the scale and start talking about your halfway point. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So there's your halfway point on your max. In between these is your three quarter way point on your minimum. And here's your sinusoidal function. So really it's a lot of halfway, a quarter way, and three quarter way points. But this is four parameters affecting this. So once we have so many things happening, it is important to understand the characteristics of these graphs. So there are some words that we've heard, and this becomes now a bit of a literary issue. Um, characteristics of a graph. We've got this equation a sine of b x minus c plus a d, a representing our amplitude, b helping us with our period, c being your horizontal shift, and d being your midline. But what if I said I'm giving you not an equation but a graph to look at? How do we get these aspects? The amplitude, we had a formula last day. And we talked about amplitude as this distance from the middle to the top. The amplitude of this graph down here is not 5. The distance from the middle to the top is 1, 2. Now we can get this as an equation, especially when we start dealing with decimals, that there is this total distance from the top to the bottom, total distance divided in half. Remember, there's no negative because amplitude is a distance. For the midline, we're talking about where's the middle. Another way of saying where's the middle is talking about averages. So what's the average of the max and the min? So if we say what's the max plus the min divided by 2, which looks very similar, we have the middle. The middle is a y value, and this can be negative. The period is a little bit tricky, but the period, um, when you look at a graph, is the time to make a full wave. So I might say from the, from the uh, minimum to the minimum is 180, and it's an inspection. So the period we have to look for a complete wave. And there's no real formula for that. Horizontal shift might be the most challenging part of this, but a horizontal shift is talking about where is a sine graph going to start? Where is a sine graph going to start? If I know that the middle is going to be at 3, I'm asking where are we on the middle? Here, 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 here. Where are we on the middle traveling up? This is where a sine graph would start. This is right here at 45 degrees. So as a horizontal shift, you're asking for a sine graph. When are you on the middle? or midline going up. If I said, hey, you're on the middle right here, you could say this is the start of a sine graph if you said there was a negative A value or a vertical flip. And that could feel a little bit tricky. As a cosine graph, remember cosine graph starts at a max. So you could say this graph starts at 90 degrees if you said this was a cos graph. So you could say 90 degrees to the right. You could also say there's no shift if you say it's a coast graph and there's a vertical flip. So if you say that A is negative, then there's no shift. So as a cosine graph, we are starting at a max. And once you get comfortable with this, it won't feel as crazy. So there are a few characteristics we can pull out of this graph. Amplitude, we might say, is the max minus the min divided by 2. This is the equation from above. The max minus the min divided by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And that makes sense. From 3 to 5 is 2. Again, remember, there eventually will be more decimals and trickier scenarios. What is the midline, the middle? I can see it's 3. But again, not always will it be as clean as this example. But if you do a max plus a min divided by 2, we have 6 divided by 2, which is 3. That is your midline. The period, 
we have to look and I can see as an inspection from minimum to minimum it's 180 degrees. If I were to ask what's the B value, which we will do in just a moment, I can take this rearranged formula 360, so we can take this period equation which we saw huh, last day, 360 divided by B and rearrange it so that it, it says B equals 360 divided by period. B is 360 divided by the period, which gives us a B value of 2. So if I said, what's the equation as a sine graph? You could say, well, amplitude is 2. B value, time for full rotation is 180. It's 2. Um, factored form, D value is 3. That's your midline. And the sine graph is starting on the midline, going up at 45 degrees to the right. So x minus a 45. We technically could have said it's starting on the midline traveling down at negative 45. And another equation then could be 2 sine of 2x plus 45. So if we say this is 45 degrees traveling left, we get to put a negative in front of the a value to say it's been flipped upside down. So instead of traveling up, it's traveling down. Both of these make this graph. As a cosine graph, we could say the same thing. A is 2. B value, same period. B value is 2. D value, same middle, 3. A, B, and D will always match for every single question. C value, this is different. Where does the cosine graph start? 90 degrees to the right. This, this, and this will make the same graph. Now alternatively, I might say the most appropriate equation hasn't been discussed yet. I could say that a cosine graph starts on a minimum is basically a vertical flip with no shift. So if I say negative 2 cos, I could say there's no shift starting instead of at a max, starts at a minimum. And all four of these would make the same graph. Which one's the most concise? I might say the bottom right. It will take some time to get to this level of comfort. Now we have a couple more graphs to attempt. Um, and as a sketch in radians for the first time, we do have to make sure that we are dealing with um, a nice scale and we are dealing with a factored form. So I gave this question to make sure that we are dealing with a factored form, and so we have to factor out that B value to give us our proper C, to see our proper shift. So a 0.5 times what makes a quarter? A half of what makes a quarter? A half of a half. So a half of pi over 2 is pi over 4. Now, I didn't give a scale this time because sometimes we're going to need to come up with that scale. But I know we're dealing with a shift down 1 and an amplitude of 3. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So we have our midline. We have our max. We have our minimum. What's a little bit dangerous is to talk about our scale. Now, I like to consider 12 or 8 tick marks as being a nice number which divides evenly. If I'm dealing with 45 degrees, I will often talk about 8 ticks. If I'm dealing with 30 or 60 degree references, I'm talking about maybe 12 tick marks. But for this question, I know that the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 0.5. I know that the period is going to be 4 pi. So we'll organize this below. The period is going to be 4 pi. Amplitude is 3. So to get to our max, I could say the middle plus the amplitude is going to take us to a 2. The middle minus the amplitude, the middle minus the amplitude, is going to take us to our negative 4. So I need to deal with a period of 4 pi. So I don't want to say this is 2 pi, you know, and then say, well, I don't have enough room. I don't want to say that 
this is 4 pi and squish everything in. So I'm going to actually just count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 tick marks and say this is 4 pi. This way I can kind of ensure that there's a nice one wave that will fit in a, in a good portion of this. I can also say that 1, 2, 3, 4, that 2 pi occurs here, that pi occurs here, and that pi over 2, which is our shift to the right, is going to nicely be divided. So we're evenly dividing these into nice tick marks, saying that for this sine graph, here's our middle, 